hello everyone. All right, I think I got all the kinks now worked out for all the technical stuff, <laughs> hopefully. Um, every time I do this, I'm realizing more and more um, different things to switch and everything. But right now, today, we're in a different spot. Um, we have two tables in the house right now, and the other one my husband is using right now because he's playing uh, video games, so you'll probably hear him in the background. But um, yeah, so hopefully the lighting's okay on this table and we can see everything. The sun's kind of coming and going right now. It's, uh, it's a nice day, but it's like cloudy, so the light keeps changing and I'm in a corner. So hopefully it's as clear as it can be for now. Um, it looks clear from the camera view, so hopefully you guys are all right and you can see everything really good but I'm gonna give it another minute before I get started. Um, I am continuing this painting. I have been dying to do it all week. <laughs> I get in my moods where I'm like, I wanna do my diamond painting. So I don't know if I wanna just keep this as um, a once a week thing or if I want to do it throughout the week. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. we'll see. If you guys just like to see it from the progress, then I can continue to just do it once a week. But if you guys don't mind me like doing more and jumping in at different parts of this, then um, I can do that too. But I mean, we all get the itch and Diamond Art Club has had a few other really cool prints that came out. So I do have two more paintings coming in soon, probably next week. Uh, I, I'm like, I'm not going to just knock them out right now, but I'll have them. So in case I do decide to just go through this one, I can pull out another one. Um, yeah, everything looks like it's working good. So I guess we'll get started now that we're a few minutes in here. Um, uh, once again, a little disclaimer. Like I said, my husband is home. Today it's his day off, so you will hear him. You will hear him playing his games on the other side of the wall here. Um, this there's nothing in this house, so no matter where I go, you would hear him because <laughs> um, everything echoes and there's like nothing to keep sound in one area. Uh, but at least I'm a little farther. Uh, this is my other desk that we got from Ikea at a really good sale. If you go to the clearance area in Ikea, you can find some really great things over there. So this is like a great table. It was like $25 and I can't see anything wrong with it. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's got the really nice sturdy legs, which, you know, those legs are like $10 each, depending what kind you get. Uh, but I have my desktop computer on here. So I just move my monitor and I move my keyboard so I have this little bit of room here. Um, so I might stay over here. That way my husband has his little area and I have mine for now. Um, also, you will probably hear my dogs I walking see. around. They have their little leashes on so you'll hear them pitter pattering. Hopefully Ona, my corgi, doesn't go barking at the squirrels. We have a lot of squirrels here so she's always barking away at them. Um, yeah, and hopefully my my youngest, she's taking her nap. Hopefully she doesn't wake up and we have no interruptions. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into this. Let me get you guys close. Hold on, let me switch views so I know, can see what I'm doing. I'll get you guys right in there. So I have finished one side, kind of. So I'm just gonna work my way across this top area. Um, that way I can pull back the plastic consistently. Oh, shit. I also switched from the baggies. If you've seen my craft haul video, you've seen that I have picked up the Harbor Freights because they have Harbor Freight here. So I put them on their little containers with the labels on them. So I figure I might as well just try it out and see how I like them. So far, I like how these open up. Oops. That was dumb. Dumb moment number one. Um, I like how these open up though. And they are a little flimsy, 
See, like the little lock is like, it's like a little flimsy plasticky. Oh, I got two more on me. This is the thing I don't like, is that if there's too much in here or it's tilted a certain way, they fall out real easily. So I'm already noticing that. So I wouldn't fill these up to like full capacity. Like I think this one was pretty full. No, I think the other container, this one. See how this one's super full? Um, I have to be careful when I open it, even though it fits in here, if I open it carelessly, like it'll all fall out and get everywhere. So I, Assume this is one of the fuller bags, but it fit in here. So, I mean, it fits a lot of beads in one little container. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Each one fit in here except the black, but the black for this canvas has like five bags. Um, this is a little less because I've already used some of the black, but yeah, they do hold quite a bit of beads. So I'm pretty impressed with that, if anything. Um, so I will be working out of these today. Like I said, I was pretty excited to find out we had a Harbor Freight here. And uh, I went in and they thankfully had them in there. I think they were like $5.99, which I was also shocked at. Like I said in my other video, I didn't know they were that inexpensive. So to find a little drill storage kit like that so cheaply, I was like, yes. Big deal, big sale. Well, not to say it, but you know what I mean. So let's see, what am I gonna start with? Let's get started first and then we can continue on in the 200 uh, questionnaire. Make sure I don't need any more wax. I think we left off at number 49, but I will double check in a second. Am I getting anything? I don't need a lot, but I was getting a little low here from what I remember last time. All right, I think that looks good. Okay, and then we will start with, I guess we'll start at the top and work our way down. I didn't put these in order, so we're gonna go on a scavenger hunt a little bit as I go here. Here we go. Okay, see what I mean? Like, I just opened it and if it's tilted like that, like they get everywhere. So open these carefully if you're looking to get these. I usually use the Elizabeth Ward and I really like those a lot. The containers are really nice. And the only thing is the little clasps are a little hard to open sometimes. Why does it look like there's different color beads in here? Can you see that? Am I tripping out? They're like different greens. Did I not realize that before? I hope I didn't pour the same bag into the... <gasps> Did I do that? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I dumped each bag individually. Ah, that's interesting. I don't know, can you guys tell? You can tell, that's so vivid on the camera. What color is it supposed to be? A dark green. All right, well, I'll just do the dark greens for now then. I'll figure that out later if I've messed up myself or if that's how they came. I'm pretty sure that's not how they came. I must have messed up. I hope that's not a sign of how this stream will go. <laughs> All right, well, dang it. Yeah, worry about that. How did that happen? I really hope I'll have to double check the baggies. I didn't throw the baggies away, I still have them. I'm just, I don't know, I'm confused. Maybe it was my fault. I don't see any differences in these drills over here and these are the same colors over here. But it looks like this dark green is supposed to be it. So I guess I'll just have to pick those out later. Oh goodness, that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. There are worse things in the world. 
All right, let me find my question. Um, oh, I think we were on 49. No, is this different? No, this is a different set. Where am I? Okay, we did those. We did the lottery question. I want to noise you. Um, oh, maybe we weren't on 49. Or these like switched up. Sorry, give me a second, guys. Let me figure out what happened. Hmm. Were we on 39? Exotic animal lottery. We did those. I thought I did with an, maybe not. Are we in career? <laughs> or otherwise they switched up this whole site. Maybe this is a totally different, um, am I in the right thing? Yeah, this is it. Okay, well, I guess we'll just start with these 40 questions. Maybe they changed it in the week, like they updated the blog post or something. Okay, so I guess we'll do, I think I answered 41. What's your favorite thing about your current job? My current job is this, essentially, my YouTube channel. Um, my favorite thing, yeah, I did answer this one, that I enjoy um, doing things in my own time. So I know I answered that one. I know I did what annoys you, what annoys you most? Hmm, did I answer that one? I don't remember what I said. What annoys me most? I mean, besides having to repeat myself. <laughs> but uh, my husband, he has hearing issues from the military in one ear and it's you know goes with the job and so he uh he can't hear out of one ear very well so half the time i always find myself repeating what i'm saying i do speak softly too so that's borderline my fault as well he uh you good? but yeah once you do the what 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 50 times it gets it gets a little annoying. Um, I think my daughter's is like, she's easily distracted, my oldest one. So having to repeat myself with her because she's so easily distracted. Or I think I said cleaning, was that my answer? Cleaning's another thing where you clean a whole house and then you go back to the room five minutes later and it's dirty again. See, I know I answered these questions. That I know I said. So we'll move on to the next one. 43, what's the career highlight you're most proud of? Yeah, I did that one. 44, do you think you'll stay in your current gig? Yes, I did that one. 45, what type of role do you want to take on after this one? Okay, so that's new. What type of role do you want to take on after this one? Um, I, I don't know what it means by role necessarily. I mean, I guess if this was successful or I didn't continue to do it, I don't know, I'm pretty set with this for now. This is kind of what I've always unconsciously wanted to do. Uh, when I was younger, I always wanted to be a teacher. And the reason being was because teachers uh, got to hand out candy when you answered questions correctly. And obviously, I had a, a very big sweet tooth. So that was like the main thing why I wanted to be a teacher. Dad and they have like the cool classrooms, which lo and behold, now I know it's more of... Um, you know, their own money, their own budget, and what they want to put into their classrooms, sadly. But 
I always thought teachers had the coolest classrooms, especially like younger grade teachers. They really go all out with their de decorations and stuff and how they hang up the projects and everything. Um, so I wanted to be a teacher. So I guess this whole like teaching tutorial bit that I do is, it just comes naturally to me. And so that in the end kind of worked itself out. And like I said, as the sweets, I went to culinary school to be a baker. And that was because of my big sweet tooth, which explains the candy. So I am a certified baker, a certified pastry chef. And then I guess now, like, I've always been interested in, like, costuming and, like, fashion but costuming wise. Um, so I've always wanted to do something like that. So I think if I didn't go to culinary school, I probably would have gone to like a costuming, like costume makeup, theater stuff. I probably would have done something like that anyways. So I think this is, you know, I finally made it to where I want to be and where I'm happy at um, with the things that I do. So uh, I don't know, maybe that, you know, that people always change and that answer might change like years down the line. But for now, like, I'm happy doing this and I don't see myself doing anything other than this right now. All right. Uh, I just, there's so much to learn. There's so much to learn in this. You different techniques, that? different ways to Wait make things. Five. So, Wait. Wait yeah, that's, that's that question. The next one, 46, are you more of a work to live or live to work type of person? Um, I think I'm more of a work to live, I guess. I, I know I work really hard. I've always tried to work very hard. At everything I do, um, you know, the harder you work, the, I mean, some people get it easy, but I think you put in the effort and the work, people see it more, they appreciate it more. And that kind of f is like fulfilling in a way for me that um, just being appreciated for what you do. That makes like everything worth it in the end. So, you know, the more effort you put into something, the better it is. Um, so I definitely work to live yeah, no, no, no. as far as that aspect goes, no, 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 like no, no, no. happiness aspect, but I mean, if I wasn't like the highest paying job, as long as I love it, that's all that matters to me. I always believe that you should do what you love. Yeah, and yes, I know we all have to pay bills and you know, life isn't that easy as That's far as that goes, is. but I mean, as long as you're you're safely you're in your safety zone and um you can support yourself and you know, if you have kids, you can support your kids and whatnot. As long as you're doing something happy, I think that's what makes life worth it. I'm going to do a run by uh, 47. Does your job make you feel happy and fulfilled? Why or why not? Well, I just kind of answered that. <laughs> that kind of goes hand in hand, I guess. Um, yeah, it does make me happy. That's why I do it. And like I said, I mean, you should always do what makes you happy because there's no point in hating life you only got one. You only got so much time. You don't know how short it is or how long it is. So you should always do what you enjoy so that in the end, if you know, you can always say you did your best. Should I go farther? No, I'll just do this section right here. Oh, I'm so bummed about these drills still. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to sit and figure it out why they are mixed. My goodness. 
I've never done that before. I've, I've done like half a bit, a bag, like a little quarter of a bag, but I've never done like a whole thing like that. If that was my fault. Um, let me see. 48. How would your 10 year old self react to what you do now? My 10 year old self. Where was I when I was 10? <laughs> Shoot, that was a long time ago. Um, let's see, 10, year old, 10 years old, you're in fifth grade? I don't know, I probably think it was pretty cool. Costumes and creating things. Yeah, as a kid, I think any kid would think that would be pretty cool. I mean, you'd have some kids that'd be like, that's weird. <laughs> but um, I think most kids would enjoy like seeing stuff like that, especially at 10 years old. You still think the magic's alive most of the time. So <laughs> well, is, is yeah, I think uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. I'd actually, I might be impressed with myself like that yeah. I'm able to do stuff like this. Uh, 49. What do you remember most about your first job? Oh gosh, my first, first job was a, what was I, a cashier at Sears. What do I remember most? <laughs> Hating it. I hated it. It was the worst. I think I worked there for like a month. It was like a seasonal job. I was in culinary school, it was right after high school. And it was just something I needed because now I was becoming an adult and I need to like help pay bills. And I, my mom got me a car, so I had to pay for like, you know, gas and whatnot. So I got the job and they put me as a cashier because it was my first job. And they like to put me on the third floor. The Sears had a third floor. But everything on the third floor, there was one half that was electronics and the other half was like home, like home essentials kind of stuff, you know, pillows, blankets, mattresses. So they would have me come in at like five in the morning because like I said, this was during holiday season. So we opened very early and they always wanted to put me on that third floor. And I guess, you know, I assumed because, you know, I was new and nobody goes up there, but it was so boring. And since it was so early, I'm not a morning person. I'm a night, I'm a night owl. So for me to wake up at five in the morning, <laughs> more earlier than five in the morning, go oh, to wow. this job, nobody's there. If you're lucky, you get one customer buying like one thing. But to stand yeah, there yeah. and like look busy was the worst thing in the world. It was the worst. I would like find myself sometimes like walking around the, the cashier booth just to stay awake. And also in culinary school, I worked, I went to school at the graveyard sort of time frame. So I started at like six and then went home at like 11. And that was perfect for me. Like I said, I love, I have more energy in the evenings. So that was perfect. So to go to home and be in bed by midnight and then have to be up at like four or something, it was it was the worst. That's all I remember in that job, falling asleep on the job. And the, the other times they would put me at the really busy ones, like it was during like peak hours. <laughs> so I was like either super underwhelmed or super overwhelmed and nobody really wanted to train me. They didn't want to train me how to do anything. So it was like half the time I'm like calling the managers like, oh, how do you do this? How do you do that? And then they would be so frustrated with me because I didn't know how to do it, but they didn't take the time to show me. So needless to say, they laid me off. <laughs> I, uh, it was more based on how many like accounts you can set up or like sign people up for the credit cards more than like anything else. And since I wasn't, I've got a few, but I wasn't like, I'm not a seller. I don't sell things. 
that's not like my forte. So yeah, they just let me go and I was happy to be let go. Um, yeah, that's what I remember about that job. So I really respect everybody who works in retail. I have since the, you know, 18, I understand. I get it. I totally respect everyone in that retail business. So I try really hard not to get mad at people because I know it's not their fault. And, you know, sometimes they just need a little patience. So whenever something happens where they're like, I got to call the manager, I'm like, you take your time. Don't even rush. I totally understand. It happens. Um, where am I? How old were you when you started working? 50. I was, uh, was I 18? Yeah, I was 18 when I did that job. So yeah, it was right after high school. Cause I, I went to culinary school two months after high school, after I graduated. And then, yeah, it was that Christmas season. Oh, there goes the sun again. Uh, number 51, what's the worst job you ever had? It was that one. <laughs> The first, the worst. I did work at Joann's. Uh, when did I work at Joann's? 2015? Yes, it was 2015. That wasn't as bad. The company, I'll have, you know, there are other things to say about the company, but uh, no, Sears was the worst. <laughs> that was the worst overall. Everybody was really mean to me there too. They weren't mean, they just weren't the nicest. They were just kind of like, oh, you're new? Okay. Like, I'm asking questions in them too. They would give me the look like, oh, all right, this is what you do. So yeah, I didn't have a good experience. Uh, 52, what originally got you interested in your current field of work? <sighs> Let's see. Can I remember that far back? Doing like this kind of stuff. I mean, I've always kind of been attracted to it. And I always thought it was really cool to see like, you know, all those fantasy movies. And it was really neat to see like all the cool costumes. I mean, I've always been around sewing because my mom was a seamstress. Um, so she's always had her sewing machines going fabric everywhere, sewing patterns, you know. So I've always like played with the fabrics and like made like Barbie clothes and things like that with her scraps. So I've been around it for as long as I can remember. Uh, but I'm really, at I didn't attempt it until I got married and I fell in love with it. But I've always liked the, uh, um, how creative people were with like costuming in general. So I guess that's, it's, it's been a long time. Like I said, being around sewing, like you kind of notice things a little bit. So I did, um, I think I was really young when I really like, um, paid attention. Come on. There we go. Um, have you ever had a side hustle or considered having one? <laughs> I mean, I think we've all been sucked into pyramid schemes at one point or another, right? Or at least people have tried to suck you in. Another side, what kind of side hustle? I mean, I've tried my Etsy shop. I was doing my Etsy shop for a little bit before I went and moved to Germany. Is this it? Yeah, I'm looking at it upside down. That's not a good, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I was doing my Etsy shop for a bit and that was making a little tiny bit of money. Uh, I guess this would be considered a side hustle since I've, I mean, I barely got monetized, so I'm, you know, I'm making pennies right now, <laughs> but um, I guess you would call that a side hustle. Uh, kind of. Yeah, I don't think I've done anything else like super 
like I need to sell this or like I said, I'm not a salesperson. So like those kind of things like sound good. But when it comes down to it, I'm like, uh, no. Uh, but like I said, in my Etsy shop, I was sewing. So I guess that leads more into this, doing what I'm doing now. Okay, what? 53? Wait, no, 54. What's your favorite part of the workday? Uh, working on my videos wise, I think my favorite part is the creating, like the ideas. I get really excited when I see like something that inspires me and I'll like study it and I'll like see like how I can make it myself. So especially right now, I've been really into Pinterest. And I'm just trying to like get a lot of ideas so when I can start sewing again, um, I can have some ideas lined up. And so I'm really into it right now. So I've been like looking at all different kinds of things like historical costuming, since I picked up a lot of historical costume patterns. I've been trying to get more like history and information on that. Um, a lot of like the big headdresses I'm really into right now. Um, so I'm trying to find out like how those are made, like how different people have made those. Uh, I've also been into looking at um, EVA foam and like armor, not necessarily armor. I'm not ready to do armor right now. It doesn't catch my interest at the moment. Um, maybe like small pieces, like a shoulder piece armor that you can add to like, um, like beadwork or something that hangs down because like I said, I'm into this like queen goddess, um, really big and elegant and fantasy kind of looks at the moment so that, you know, I've seen some where it's like an armor shoulder piece and then it hangs like beading off of the sides so maybe something like that, but uh, also like the big horns that you can make out of craft foam. I've been looking into that kind of stuff, uh, what I need for that. So I get really inspired uh, by going through like imagery and like things like that. So what was the question? <laughs> Uh, my favorite part, of, yeah, so my favorite part is the creating part. That's where I'm like getting ideas of what to make. And I really want to try a lot of new things this year or this next year coming up, I should say, because this year is almost over. Uh, I really want to try a few new things and really start like stepping up, stepping up in the crafting, crafting world a little bit. So Hopefully, a lot of exciting things to come. And now that I'll have my own craft room, I'm so excited. I'm going to have my own workspace uh, to throw things around in. So, <laughs> um, big thank you to my husband for providing and uh, doing what he does. So, <laughs> so that I can live my dream. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's... That's the best part of the day. Um, 55, what's the best career deci decision you've ever made? Uh, let's see, let's see. I want to say, I guess this goes back to when I worked at Panera. I uh, was trying to advance, I guess, because I was a baker trainer. So I I would train all the bakers how to bake everything. And it was like a six week training time for each baker. And after baker trainer, you became a baker manager assistant kind of thing. I forget what you call it now. And I was trying to apply for that position 
because I, you know, I was, I was doing really well in that job. I was doing extremely well in that job. And I had two of my good friends at the time going for the same position because we were all there about the same time frame. And it came down to like a trial where you would do their tasks for a day to see, or two days, I think it was, to see how you liked it, to see, you know, get an idea of what to do. And um, should I do this one first? No, let me do the other color first. Where is it? This one. And so I did my two days and I hated it. <laughs> I did, the first day was really easy. You know, everything went according to plan. It was great. Everything was going good. The second day, someone called out an hour before it was time to start shifts. So that like messed me up. And it was the unknowing, like you don't know what the day is gonna bring once you go to work kind of thing. Or even before work, like things can change. So I didn't like that at all. I, I like to have a plan, I'm a planner. So when things get thrown at me like randomly like that, it's a little frustrating. And so I realized like, that's not for me. And then also once you move up in that position, okay. you're, you're not in the kitchen as much. You're, um, you're doing more paperwork. You're dealing with all the other bakers. And I just, I didn't like that. I hate paperwork. I absolutely hate it. The little bit of paperwork I had to do as a trainer, it was the worst. <laughs> and, uh, all my trainees would tell you, they'd be like, yep, she, she procrastinated that as long as she could. Um, I mean, I, I kept them up to date, like work, like I trained, I just hated the paperwork part. It was the worst. So I think that was a great decision that I didn't decide to do it after all, because I think if I did too, I would have been stuck in that job forever because I would have been making such good money that it would be hard to go anywhere else and like live that life that I was living. So I was like, I'm just gonna stay where I'm comfortable right now. And I think I knew that I was getting married and we were gonna move anyways. So I was like, it's fine. Like I'll find something else wherever we go. So yeah, I definitely, I'm glad I didn't take, I didn't go through with it. The last day I went in and I told the bosses, I was like, uh, it's not for me. I have to decline or what is it? Take away my application kind of thing. I was like, and they were totally respectful about that. They were like, I'm, I'm, I respect the fact that you came in and on the day that you were supposed to do your test or whatever. And, um, and you told us face to face and da da da. So they they were impressed to say the least. But um, yeah, it was a good decision at the time. Um, what's the worst career decision you've ever made? Um. Hmm. Worst career decision I've ever made. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's anything I really did that I was regretful of. Yeah, I can't say there's anything bad that I wish I could have done over necessarily. I mean, my first job, it sucked, but I mean, it was my first job. It's your, it's your foot in the door. It's who's, you know, once you get your foot in the door, it's like, okay, well you have that experience. So, you know, other, somewhere else is gonna hire you easier. So, I mean, I don't regret working there. I mean, it, it was only a month, so I can't really complain. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think I have any 
worst decisions. I, I'm happy with where I've gone in my career. Maybe I wish I would have had the idea to start my YouTube sooner. <laughs> but I mean, that just falls on life and experiences. And I always think everything happens for a reason. So, you know, there was a reason I didn't get the idea to start this channel sooner. Okay. 57. Do you consider yourself good at networking? That is a no. <laughs> that is definitely a no. I think I answered that question in the last one about being an introvert. I am getting better at not being so shy, but at the same time, like I don't sell myself. So for me to like find other, like, for example, like maybe a cosplayer to, what's the word to, um, collaborate with. I, I think if it happened naturally, I'd be good to go. But for me to like go and like reach out and be like, Hey, da, 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 like it's, it's not something I would do. I mean, yeah, work like business wise for this channel, it'd probably be smart, <laughs> but I mean, I, I guess I'll get to that hurdle when it needs to be jumped. But for now I'm, I'm happy. It's my channel's moving. I'm getting a ton of new subscribers these days and I'm really in shock. Like my little number ticker is like tick, tick, tick every day. So, um, thank you for everyone subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. It's, it's exciting. It is. And I'll get there one day where, you know, I'll extend my branches, but for now, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to m grow myself. I guess you could say I'm focused on, on growing my abilities and I want to make my projects bigger and better. That's my goal right now. Um, I figure it'll come, it'll come naturally down the line. I don't want to force it and like, be like, Hey, you're cool. I like your channel. Like join my channel. And you know, what if they're not the right decision after all or something like I'd rather, you know, be natural and make, I guess, meet, I guess, real people who really want to meet me rather than forcing it. We all know what happens when you try to force friendships and other, among other things, <laughs> or at least we hope we know. Um, 58, what career advice would you give to your younger self? Hmm. I'd probably give him my idea for my YouTube channel <laughs> so I could start sooner. Um, uh, no, I, I probably like tell myself to like pay attention to my mom more when she's sewing and see how she does everything and like try stuff sooner and try and make costumes sooner or like things I want to make sooner. Cause maybe that would give me a, you know, better, uh, techniques or, or I'd have, um, I'd be better at it by now, I guess I should say. I would know more at this point if I started sooner. So maybe that would be my advice. Pay attention to my mom. <laughs> um, 'Do you believe in having a five year plan? Well, let's put it this way. I'm a planner. But at the same time, I do know things change very quickly, whether you want them to or not. And I think it's best to have an idea of where you want to be, but to not have it like set in stone. I think you should, you should go with the flow sometimes. And I think sometimes you should stick to your guns. It just depends on the circumstances. Um, did I think I would be here where I am today, five years ago? No, I didn't. I think I was about to start my YouTube channel 
or right before I even decided what I wanted to do on my YouTube channel. So I, you know, I didn't even realize I'd be doing this. I didn't realize I'd be live streaming maybe two years ago at any point. I always thought it would just be like video, like watch the video kind of thing. I didn't think streaming would be a thing. So, I mean, things change whether you want them to or not. And I think it's it's a good idea to have an idea of what you want, but you know, do, do what comes to you in the time. Like, like I said, everything happens for a reason. So if something's not working out as much as you want it to, like maybe it's a good idea to change it. So I guess I don't believe in five-year plans <laughs> to answer the question. Um, maybe a one-year plan. Definitely a one-year plan. I believe in that. Uh, okay. 60. How do you separate your work life from your home life? Spoiler alert, I don't. <laughs> I am at home all day. So... I'm so lucky to even have this little like two hour like quiet time. And it's been pretty awesome. But most of the time like my girls are here like or my husband's home. I can't I don't go anywhere. This is this is where I work. So it's work and home and it's it's stressful. It is um, cause you never get a break. The job never ends, you know? So I have good days and I have bad days where, you know, they let me do things and other days where they won't let me, they won't let me do anything. So I just try my best to do what I can. Um, you know, so I try to do things that I can relax with, like Diamond painting has been a big stress relief since I found it back in April. Um, I'll play video games when I can. I'll read. Reading's really relaxing. Um, so it, it, I just try to find ways to give a few moments to myself every now and then. And that's the best I can do for now, but I mean, I can't really say I hate my life. I love my life. It's pretty great. It just, it's just a little stressful. Everybody needs a break for mental stability. Um, which I think is why a lot of people love to diamond paint because it's so um, therapeutic. Uh, so definitely, I'm, I'm hooked with this for a while. Okay, 61. When will you know you've made it? When I can pay a bill <laughs> with my own money and like still have money to like buy crafts. I think then I'll know I've made it. Just enough to... To like say like I'm an adult doing adult things like paying bills like I guess like that I mean it's not like my husband's like you know you don't work you don't you don't get this you know he's totally like he loves that I'm doing what I'm what I love to do um I was the breadwinner when we got married and then like I said I decided to follow him with his career for now uh, so, but I think, um, the idea of making it, doing what I absolutely love doing, that would be amazing. But yeah, I think it'd just be that point where I can like pay a bill <laughs> with my own money as well as still have like money to buy more craft things than I've made it. That would be the, that would be it. That would be 
the best because right now we're happy. We're very happy where we're at right now. Um, so that would just be like it. Uh, are you looking forward to retiring or do you plan to work as long as possible? I got a funny story for this. When I was in, I guess it's funny. Well, to me, it's funny. Um, I was, I was in high school still and I guess someone recommended me for, what was it? The Navy. <laughs> so I had this Navy recruiter f calling me one day and he was like, Hey, we think you should join da, da 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 Like someone recommended you and said that you're great and you want to do this. You know how they are if you've ever talked to a recruiter. And he was like, well, I'll call you tomorrow because we had this big conversation. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't think that's for me. And he was like, okay, well, I'll call back tomorrow and let you think on it. And I was like, okay. So like he calls me back the next day and he's like, you know, going on with his spiel again, his spiel. And at some point he asked me, don't you want to retire when you get older? And I told him, I was like, well, if I'm, cause his whole point was like, you know, you're going to love it. Da, da, da. And I was like, but if I'm doing what I love, why would I want to retire? And he kind of like shut up after that. And I think he, he knew I was like, he wasn't going to get me. And, um, so, I mean, if I do this, obviously YouTube is, you know, it may not be around forever, but I hope to do other things eventually outside of YouTube. Uh, so I want YouTube to be like a starting platform to get me higher, I guess. So I think I mentioned also in my other, um, live video that I wanted to eventually like do like some sort of craft convention. Um, so, I mean, that's what I mean. Like a larger, um, sort of platform or this is the platform. I want to jump off into that. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. And, uh, so if I'm doing stuff like that in the end, I mean, maybe, I guess I could retire, but I think it's something that I can do until I'm old, oh, as old as I can, at least. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see how I feel in another 10 years when I'm like, yeah, my body hates me even more and it starts giving out. Then I guess, yeah, I would we'll be looking forward to retirement <laughs> if I was able to, you know, get this get this going to that kind of point um 63 have you ever had imposter syndrome i don't know what that is imposter syndrome let's click on it where is it gonna take me i don't know what imposter syndrome is five different forms okay this is a lot uh, we'll skip that question because I don't know what that means. And that's a big old article. Uh, 64. What do you think about workaholics? I guess, I mean, it's for one, it's not my business. <laughs> they want to work. They can work, right? Um, maybe it's something they love to do. Maybe it's, you know, they get anxiety or something. Maybe, maybe they're trying to set themselves up so they can live, you know, just glide the rest of their life by. I mean, I'm sure workaholics have reasonings or most of the time they just love to do it. It's, they love to work. They love doing stuff. So, I mean, to each their own. Like I said, more, more power to them if, you know, they want to just, Go, go, go. So, I mean, nothing against them. If they want to be workaholics, like, more power to them, for sure. More power to you if you're a workaholic. I like work. I like doing what I love, but I do need breaks from time to time. So, that's just me. 
What qualities do you look for in a boss? Number 65. Well, being that I'm trying to be my own boss, um, I guess what I look for is that they care. I mean, isn't that what anybody wants is that your boss cares about you and they're not just like, you don't feel expendable or like they can just throw you away the next day kind of thing. Like you don't matter. Like I think everybody wants a boss who cares about them and who takes care of them. I mean, not much else to say about that. I mean, yeah. Do you have a professional mentor? No, I don't. I kind of self-teach myself everything. I do a lot of YouTube to like see how other people do things. I guess that's my mentor um, in general. Because uh, I mean, you can learn how to do anything on YouTube. So, but yeah, professional mentor, no. It'd be kind of cool. I'd love to learn from like people who know, who are in the industry and know how to do all this. That would be amazing to learn all their tips and tricks. But most of them are online anyways. So you can probably like find their like websites and they probably have like videos or like online classes you can do, especially right now with with all the online stuff, like, so if anything, if I, if I could go back to college, I would go back to college for fine arts just to learn from like professionals like that, um, certain techniques, things like that. Maybe one day. 67. Do you have a work best friend? My husband. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's the only one who comes to my work at home and he's my best friend. So easy, <laughs> uh, 68, actually he does give me a lot of ideas. So I do got to say that he does. And he helps me with all the technology and electronics. And so all those good quality videos, like he helps me with that, um, and supports me and sets everything up for me. So yeah, he's definitely, I guess you would call my work colleague at the same time. 69, how do you motivate yourself in your career? I do get burnt out from time to time. Um, especially like the sewing because each thing does take a while to make. And if I get stuck on something, it's, it really, makes me want to stop. Um, although making the video pushes me to keep doing it because I'm like, no, I can't start a new video until I finish this one. And I need to edit it and get it up um, on my channel. So, you know, maybe I might go through a rut for a couple days, but eventually I have to push myself to like get back into it and continue, um, continue working on it until I get it. And if I can't get it, then I'll just kind of wing it and make up my own. Uh, I think the last project that happened to was uh, my dirndl dress, the, the blouse. I couldn't figure out the neckline. And eventually I just kind of winged it and I was like, whatever, like it still looks good. I know that's not how it was supposed to be done. I can't understand the instructions and I can't find any video that shows me how to do it. I think a month later I was thinking about it and it kind of hit me like, oh, is that what it was trying to tell me to do? I don't remember what it is now. I'm going to, I want to make another, um, dirndl drought, dirndl blouse. Um, so hopefully I remember it when I get to that point. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely setting me back a little bit. I think that's why it took me four days to to make that dress. It was beautiful. I was looking at it the other day and I was, I was impressed with myself. I was like, I made that. That's pretty freaking cool. Um, yeah. So if anything, I get unmotivated when I get stuck, but I think that's most people. Um, 
Well, I guess unless you're a problem solver and you like solving problems like that. Um, yeah, otherwise, I think another time I was just, I couldn't think of any ideas for videos. I was just, there was nothing like sparking my interest. So I think I stopped making, either I didn't make videos for a bit or I made like something else, like a craft. Uh, okay, 70, right? Yes. What's the best career advice you've ever heard? I mean, that was from my mom and like, it's what I said earlier, like do what you love. Cause I mean, why hate life, right? Nobody wants to hate life. Everybody wants to, to be happy, so. I think you should just try your best to do what you love. Even if it's not your exact job, I think you should have something at home, like a hobby that you love doing. Um, 71, what's the worst career advice you've ever <laughs> received? Oh gosh, I don't know. The worst advice? Um, I can't think of anything at the moment. I think it was my friend when they told me to work at Sears. <laughs> Cause I did have a friend who worked there at the same time. And she was like, oh yeah, I work there. Oh, you applied, okay. They told me that, um, they told me that you were gonna get hired or whatever. And so she was like, yeah, I like it. Da, da, da. So I think maybe that was worse. <laughs> That I can think of. Needless to say, we're not friends anymore. Um, 72. When you started your current job, what most surprised you? I guess the the projects, I, some of the projects I've made, I was pretty impressed that I was able to make them from starting from nowhere. Um, What is it that surprised me? Yeah, I think that was that would be my biggest thing is that the things I'm able to like actually make myself, I am pretty impressed with. And like some of the techniques are pretty cool. Like you look at them and you're like, that looks so complicated. And then you finally like make it and you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. And that actually looks really neat. Um, 73. How do you pick yourself back up after making a mistake at work? So I guess this goes back to the, what is it? The like getting in a rut when I can't figure something out. And like I said, it was just a matter of like, no, can't start nothing new. That's my thing. I'm a, what is they call it? A monogamous monogamous crafter where I have to finish something before I start something new. I can't like have like 50 projects around cause I get really overwhelmed. Um, yeah, I have to, I have to start something and if I start something else, then it's gotta be like something small or something for someone. And I hate doing it. I hate switching out. Um, when I'm trying to finish something else. So I try to do one thing at a time. So that's that's probably my main thing. Like I can't do nothing and I can't do anything new unless I finish what I already have. Um, but that's, you know, that's me personally. I know everybody's different. Some people can have like 50,000 projects going and they're totally happy with that. So, so I'm, uh, you know, it's my own personal. Uh, opinion. 74. How do you deal with work stress? Um, gosh, these, these, I guess I'm going too in depth with the questions because I feel like I'm like, I've already answered these before. But as a quick answer, it's like I said before the diamond paintings, um, sewing, reading books, uh, playing video games. TV, not so much because I'm interrupted every five minutes, so I can't focus anymore, so I don't watch a lot of TV anymore, 
I used to watch a ton of TV or movies, especially. I used to watch all the movies. And now I'm like, I don't think I've seen a movie, a new movie in a long time. Okay. 75, what energizes you about your career? New ideas. Uh, yeah, if I, if I have a really great idea and I have everything ready, like all my, my uh, materials, like then I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's get into this. Let's cut the pattern pieces. Let's sew them together. That definitely gets me going. 76, what's one work-related thing you want to accomplish in the next year? I got a few things I'm actually trying to um, try this next year. So there's the EVA foam, like I mentioned. There's historical costuming. I'm not trying to be historically accurate. I just kind of want to see how they made them back then because obviously I'm going to use my sewing machine and, you know, I probably won't do a lot of hand stitching like they used to or anything, but like to see how they made like the ruffles or um, the petticoats. I really want to try how to do corsets. Somebody also made a comment on one of my videos not too long ago about doing a corset. Um, I would love to do a corset the what is it the cosplay my mccall's mm, what is it midnight herbalist i think yeah or not midnight or something like that night felt herbalist there you go um that one has a corseted structure in the bodice so i'd love to um I'm, that's going to be my first like course. I almost have everything for that. So hopefully the beginning of the year, that video will go up, but I want to use that as like a base to like try it out. And hopefully if I get the hang of it real easy, then I want to do like a, a nice like corset because steampunk uses a lot of corsets. Um, so I want to like incorporate some corsets. I also want to try some like a little bit of leather working as far as like harnesses go um, once again for that steampunky aesthetic but also <laughs> I'm telling you I got into Pinterest and now I can't like I have so many ideas and like directions I want to go in but uh, going along with how I loved rock music I want to do like a very gothy look uh, or like a cyber goth or something like that and they also use a lot of harnesses so I want to incorporate um, the the gothy looks or like pastel goss. Yeah, I've been like trying to do some research into the different fashions. Um, just cause they're so, they're so amazing. Like how each one is so characterized, each fashion. Um, just like Lolita, like Lolita is a fashion. It's not a costume. So um, like people dress like that every day cause that's their thing. Um, but just like God's like, but like some of these outfits are just so cool and like so like intricate and I'd love to recreate some of them. So there's those I wanna try. There is, um, what was the other thing I was looking at? Yeah, I, I, th I think that's the main um, like ideas I really wanna, I really wanna get into next year at least try so i'm hopefully hopefully i can have more videos you know i always want to have more videos each year um it only got stalled this year just because we moved and i'm running out of wax here we moved and i you know we don't have our stuff for this long period of time which good news our stuff is here in the states it's in storage until our house is completed. So they also moved up our closing date to next month, toward the end of next month. So it's gonna be a crazy Christmas. Um, but I mean, it is what it is and it's sooner than what they originally said it would be done. So hopefully we'll have our stuff sooner than later. But because I've been, what, this is month, August, September, October, November, three, it'll be about four months without everything, with all, all of our things. So um, I missed a lot of time uh, to add more crafts.
craft videos that I wanted. So I'll have to add them next year. Like I said, it'll it's great. It'll I'll have something already to go next year. So yeah, definitely trying to double up on videos. Seventy seven. Who has had the biggest impact on your career choice? Mm. Yeah, I would say. Well, my mom, I guess, because yeah. you know she did it for so long. So like you know you grow up. Mm, I guess you know inspired by your parents usually, sometimes. Um, I mean, my dad was a self-taught chef, so I guess that's where the baking came in. But my mom did sewing. She also does dancing, but I love to dance, but only only my own time, <laughs> not professionally. Just um, like I said, I was a big raver, and that wasn't because of anything, you know, of what you hear about raves. I didn't drink because I would get dehydrated. I didn't do drugs. It's not my thing. Um, I just love the music, and I love to dance. So I got that from my mom. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's where the sewing came from. So I guess, you know, she's my biggest career right. influence, but I guess Thank once you. again, like I said, my husband, cause he was like, that's cool. He's like, he's impressed all the time when I make things and he's like, I can't believe you made that. And, uh, so he's always pushing me to like, do it. Um, He's also not very um, creative, <laughs> so so uh, yeah, he's very impressed when when I make things or if I explain something yeah. to him and like how I'm making it, and he's like, uh, yeah, okay, sure. And then I finish it, and he's like, oh, he's like, I didn't even think yeah. that's what you were doing. <laughs> so yeah, he definitely motivates me. Okay. 78, what does your family think of your career? Oh, shit. I mean, they, it's nothing bad. They're, I mean, they're supportive. Very they're all supportive. Enough. His family, my family, like everyone's very supportive of it. Um, they enjoy it. They yeah. enjoy watching my videos. Um, my yeah, mom, always, maybe, I mean, but she's my mom. So she's yeah, always, She's always been really supportive. Like I said, I think that's where I got that motto from was do what you love. That was from her. So um, she's like, as long as you're happy, you know, it's fine. Um, yeah, so yeah, no, they're very supportive about it. So I'm happy to have that because I know a lot of people don't have that. And it's very common for people to go against their families like that so I'm very fortunate to uh, have two families that are like cool go for it okay 79 what's the best thing you've learned in your current position Let's see, the best thing I've learned, I mean, besides all the like cool techniques and how to read patterns, I'm gonna say that. Oh, I never knew how to read a pattern. Oh. Those things are complicated. They really uh, can com be super confusing. So I'm really getting good at like reading them now, um, unless it's a specific instruction that's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> But for the most part, I think I'm, I'm, uh, that's the best thing I've learned because now I have, I have this really cool tool that I can utilize to like make things. Cause I don't know how, I made a few things like yeah, with sure. absolutely nothing and it took forever. And I don't know how many times I had to cut out something like to make one little like pair of shorts or something like it was, it was worse. And then not knowing how to fix it. So now that I have a pattern or like a base, it really helps. Um, 80, if you could do it all over again, would you purchase or oh, pursue the, the same, oh my gosh. If you do it all over again, would you pursue the same career? Uh, this career? Yes, of course. 
the baking career. Yeah, I, I love baking. I love sweets. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's always a good tool to have in my back pocket for whenever I need it. Um, so yeah, I would definitely do both of them again. I just wish maybe I did them in a different order. Like I did the costuming and went to school for that. And then, um, did, uh, baking as like a hobby. But then again, I, I worked at Panera for eight years and that was probably the best job ever. So, you know, if I didn't go to culinary school, I wouldn't have that job. So I guess, you know, it happened the way it was supposed to. So I would, um, I guess it'd be important to do it all over again in that, in that same timeline. Ooh, moving on to family. We got what, 15 minutes for family? 81, how much time do you spend with your family? With my husband, I mean, he works a lot. Well, he did. When we were in Germany, he was, he was always working, which is really unfortunate because, you know, we went to Germany to take advantage of the traveling, to take advantage of um, the culture. But with him working so much, it was really hard to do. Being here in Texas, it's, um, the job isn't as uh, demanding. So he's finally getting his break that he definitely deserves. Because those three years were, they were rough for him. Um, but that being said, with our, you know, uh, my parents and his parents and aunts and cousins and, you know, all that, we, we don't get to see them very often. Especially these last three years, we went home the first year we were there, the summer after the first year. And it was so expensive to fly back home from Germany that we just couldn't do it again. So we haven't seen anyone yet. We got here, but with COVID going on and everything, it um, it's, it's made it harder to go home before we came here. So we haven't seen them in about, I wanna say almost, about three and a half years? No, three years ish, about three years. So it's been pretty, pretty sad. And we were hoping to see them um, when we got here, that didn't go. Then we were like, okay, well maybe we'll go home for Thanksgiving or, but for sure for Christmas. But now with the house um, coming through by Christmas time, we're like, no, we, we can't go right now because the house, you know, we got to get the house um, paperwork done and signed for, get the keys. And then we got to get our stuff in before the holiday, hopefully, so that um, we're not waiting a week in another empty house or more, who knows. So we're just, we can't go anywhere at this time. So we call, we try to call as often as we can, but it's, it's, it sucks. It does. I mean, if you have someone in the military or you're married to someone in the military, you know, like that's probably the worst part of it is that you're always moving around. You don't know, you don't have any set rules or timelines or anything. It's just what they say goes. And if they say jump, you say how high. <laughs> so, um, so he's, he's got about, what, seven more years? Eight or seven years left? He's a lifer. He's looking for that retirement. So, uh, you know, we're, all, we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, but for now, you know, it, it's sad because the family can't see the girls. But, I mean, they have a good life, so... I guess that's all that matters. Um, who do you most like spending time with and why? Well, I mean, like I, I just said, <laughs> I'll just make the short answer. The husband, we all know now at this point. 
Um, I guess he has to be because, like I said, with his whole military life and moving around and he's the only one I got to put up with, like, I guess I kind of have to like him, right? <laughs> Otherwise, this would suck. This would be really painful and extremely bad if we did not like each other as much as oh, we just, or I, love each other I as much as we do. Um, Eighty-three. Were you close with your family growing up? Growing up, yes, definitely yes. I was. I was. We had a big family. We have a very big family. But as time has gone on, um, a lot of the main family members have passed away. So the family has kind of dispersed. And now I just have my mom and my little brother who we don't, we don't talk to like that. We're just, we love each other, but we, we're not close. And then I have my older brother, my old, my middle oldest brother, and he, uh, he lives in Arizona, I think, so I don't get to see him at all very often. Other than that, I have my nieces and nephews, and I try and keep in touch with most of them. Um, a couple of them have joined the military recently as well. One is in the Marines, and the other is in the Navy. So, yeah, but I try, I try to, to say hi to them every once in a while. I have my oldest nephew. He's trying to be a firefighter. So, you know, they got their lives. Um, what am I on? Here we go. Nope, that's not it. Is this one? Yes. Um, but yeah, but my husband, oh, he's super close with his family. They're super close. They, he's got a big family too. And, um, so yeah, so the, they're all very close and um, it's nice to have that again with him. And thankfully they accept me <laughs> and all of my, my uh, weirdness. I'm sure they're probably like, what does she do? Huh? But um, yeah, no, they accept me for me. And uh, yeah, so. So it's nice to have that big, close family. When we're home, anyways, at least. Um, were you close? Wait, no, we just did that one. 84, how do you define your family now? Oh, I did that one. I already kind of answered it. 85, what traits are most important to you in your family members? I mean, most important... I don't know. I mean, I guess they just accept you, right? Everyone wants to be accepted by their family. Everyone wants their family to be like, that's, you want, that's what you want to do? Yeah, Go yeah. for it. Or like, I don't know, supportive. I don't know. That's kind of a... I think that's a, what do you call it? Common sense question. Uh, 86, who are you closest to and why? I guess probably my mom. I mean, we're still not like the closest, but uh, I think we're pretty close for the most part. Like I said, I call her all the time or I try to. And uh, I try to keep in touch as much as I can. So yeah, I'd say my mom. Do you want a family of your own? Got one. I already got one. Uh, 88, what's your favorite family tradition? Here we go, now we're getting into better questions again. I don't know what happened, they changed the site because I think they had better questions than this before. Someone must have updated it. But, um, family tradition, hmm, we tried Thanksgiving, didn't work out. <laughs> we kept getting invited everywhere. Um, my turkey, the last time I made it, got burned. So, <laughs> I don't think we're going to do Thanksgiving as a tradition. 
um, Christmas decorating or decorating in general for Halloween or whatever. That's that's my thing, obviously. So, you know, when people say, oh, every the day after Thanksgiving, I put all my Christmas decorations up. Um, or like certain day we all sit and do it. Yeah, no. My husband's just like, if I'm home, if I'm not playing my game, I'll help you. Um, kind of thing. So that's not a tradition. Uh, I don't know. I guess we don't really have a set one yet. Although the girls are getting older, so we're going to need to have something soon. Because I think it, I think it's nice that families have something that they can all do together. Um, and look forward to. Like something not where they're like, oh, we're doing this again. I mean, I guess when you're a teenager, you're like, oh, God, we've got to be a family. Um, but, you know, they, they always look back in the end. And after those teenage years, they're like, oh, I miss those times we used to do that. So I really, I really want to think of something um, to do every year. So hopefully it'll come to me soon. It's just, I don't know, it's hard to... Think of something we all like get excited for at the same time. Um, if you could change your relationship with a family mem family member, would you? I mean, with all of them, I wish I was a lot closer with my bro my oldest brothers. I wish I was a lot closer with my nieces and nephews. Um, yeah, I wish, I wish, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that because, you know, they're still here. They're still around, like, there's still time to connect, you know, so phone, phone works both ways, like they say. So, you know, I just, I need to put the effort in more if that's, you know, if that's what I want. I need to, I need to take the step forward for it. What was it like growing up as the youngest, oldest, middle? I was the, okay, so it's really weird. I was the oldest from my mom. So it was me and my little brother. My dad had a previous marriage and he had my three oldest brothers. So, but it was a big gap. So I was, what, like, my oldest brother was about half my, I was half his age. So that's why there's such a big like gap between us. Or well, that's not why, but um, that's why we weren't so close because there was such a big gap between us. Um, so I grew up as the oldest, essentially. And what was it asking me? What was it like? I mean, <laughs> you have to do everything and the younger one gets away with everything. <laughs> um, I don't I don't think it helped because that I was a girl either. So it's like girl and boy, like he got away with things that I didn't or, you know, things he should have been in trouble for, he never was. I think that's how it is most of the time. Um, 91, does your family ever take trips together? We did, we used to. Um, after my dad passed away, my mom tried to uh, do things as a family. So every year during the summer, we would go on a trip. So we've done like Kauai. We've done that cruise to the Caribbean that took off from New Orleans. Uh, what else did we do? Um, she took us to New York one year for a weekend. So she, uh, we did do a few trips as a family, like vacation trips. What's your favorite family memory? I think it was, like I said, that trip to, um, that cruise that we went on to the Caribbean. That was probably my favorite memory. Uh, 93, what TV family most reminds you of your own none we're not that exciting <laughs> we are not that exciting my brother's super quiet he don't say anything although he comes out with funny like witty sayings 
at the perfect time. He always had a knack for that. He would never say anything, and the moment he did it was always something funny. Um, my mom, I don't think my mom likes people. <laughs> and me, I was, like I said, I was always shy, so. It would have never, it would have just been a bunch of us sitting around doing nothing or keeping to ourselves. So we weren't really like TV show families. Do you ever wish you were raised differently? No, of course not. I am who I am because of how I was raised, right? So, no, I, I, I like who I am. It's taken a long time to get to that point. I mean, I can always improve myself as well. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy how I was raised. I wouldn't change anything. Oh shoot, it's almost time to go. So let me do one more real quick. Uh, where are we? 95, what's the best piece of advice a family member has given to you? Um, like I said, that was my mom with the um, do what you love. 96, do you wish you had more siblings? No. <laughs> Because I don't want to share. I already hated sharing with my brother. And we always fought. We didn't get along. So, um, And then I have my four, my three older brothers that I uh, I wish I was closer with. And, you know, I didn't get that opportunity. So, uh, 97, did you ever hide anything from or lie to your parents? I think we're going to stop there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, who doesn't? We're all teenagers at some point. We're all, you know, young adults who think they know the world, who think they own the world. So, you know, we all do stupid things from time to time. Never anything bad. I didn't do anything bad. I, I really didn't. Um, I'm too shy for all that. Um, but, or I was super too shy for all that. But I mean, you know, everybody has a life and everybody has to learn their own lessons. So we all did stupid things at some point in time. But I guess let's go to 100 so we'll be even. 98, if you had a family business, what would it be? Like I said, it would be a craft convention. Uh, and 99, do you and your family have any nicknames for each other? My, when I was growing up, my mom and dad used to call me Nana because my name is Ariana. And I, they said they called me Nana because my, and my little brother was born. He couldn't say Ariana. He would just say Nana. So they called me Nana for like, I don't know, to my, I was in my late teens, early twenties. And now everybody calls me Ari. Uh, yeah. I don't have any other nicknames. That was it. I mean, my brother and I always call each other nicknames that weren't nice. So <laughs> there's that. But I mean, I don't think that counts. Um, so yeah. So I think we end. We'll end here at uh, number one hundred. I did get a little chunk done. I feel like not as much as I did. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Let's see if I can. You guys can see a little bit. Um, I guess it's a little more than what I've done the first uh, live. But I guess uh, I'll pick up when we come back. Uh, I do need to do my cross stitch because I haven't touched that in a while. So maybe I'll finish that and do an update video next week. We'll see. Um, but if not, like I said, I will, if I don't have a normal video for the week, then I will do a live stream just to keep you guys in the loop and updated. And, um, what else? Yeah, I think that's it for this week. But I just want to say thank you for coming to hang out with me. I really appreciate you guys that come to watch. And, um, you know, I, I wish I could do more craft videos at this time, but soon. We're almost there. We're in the home stretch. Hopefully one more month. And I'll be, I'll be able to get up a new setup. And um, I can start... Um, putting more videos out again. 
But this is fun. I enjoy doing a little chit chat anyways. Like I said, I know I, it's hard to be more personal in my tutorial videos because I can't just sit there and like say, okay, so this seam. So anyways, today, da 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 because then that video would be like a million years long and they're already like 45 minutes as it is. So I, uh, I think this is a great alternative. And um, like I said, that way you can see that I'm still here I don't have such big gaps between my videos. Like you can see that I'm still here. I'm still present. I'm still trying to be involved here in my channel. So, um, yeah, uh, like I said, if I don't have the video next Wednesday, I will be live again, same time. And yeah, so I hope you guys come back and I will see you or talk to you guys all next time. Thanks. Bye.